Namaskaram to everyone and a very good morning to everyone. I welcome you all to this live session uh, as a part of Ranjini Memorial Trust live series program. I'm Samanvi here welcoming all of you to our today's discussion with Shri Aravinda Hebbar sir. Namaste sir. So, uh, before we start, I would just like to say a few words about uh, Professor Arvind Hebbar sir. Uh, he is fondly known as Hebbar sir and uh, to make long things short, he is my guru. So, uh, Hebbar sir, he, he, he did not receive formal training in Carnatic music until his 30s. So, he just came to know what Carnatic music is only during his time as a MSc student in Mysore. Uh, he, was he was born and brought up in a small pocketed village of South Karnataka, so he did not have much exposure there. Only after coming to Mysore for his graduation did he come to know that there is something called Carnatic music and classical music and it fascinated him. So his entry to this field happened through a concert of Sri Maharajapuram Santanam sir through an All India radio recording. So from then radio became his guru. He started listening to, he listened, he listened to many concerts extensively uh, and uh, he has documented all the concerts that has been broadcasted in the radio for kind of 15 years. So I, all the concerts are there in his diary which, which is still there with him now along with the ragam, talam, whatever knowledge he had. Only with that he used to, he tried to learn everything all by himself. And uh, it's actually very great the amount of knowledge that he learned with, uh, learned without anyone teaching him anything. He learned to identify and recognize hundreds of ragams, talams, and he could even sing and reproduce even complex ragams like Begada and Ananda Bhairavi. And, and he did not know the swaram. He did not know anything about the swaram, nothing about talam, nothing. No. Uh, none of the technical aspects did he knew, but just by listening, he could sing and uh, no, he could he could reproduce exactly all the complicated songs and uh, ragams of Carnatic music. And after uh, after his uh, after coming to Udupi here in Karnataka, he started learning officially Carnatic music. And since then, he has he has uh, he has tried to understand all the. Uh, the, the whole of Carnatic music itself, right from Sadigama Padanisa. And uh, he, is, he is very good in musicology, he has, and, and this is all by himself, he has learnt all the musicology aspects and he has a very good, uh, a, a very beautiful concept of how music should be and, and all those other things. He is a vast treasure house of knowledge, I can say that very proudly. Because he was devoid of any opportunities to become a full-fledged musician, he trained his daughter Ranjani Hebbar along with his, along with his wife Vasanta Lakshmi Hebbar who is also my guru. Ranjani Hebbar as you all might have known, she, she rose to become a star in the field of Carnatic music until her untimely demise in 2013. And uh, with her demise all the hopes of sir and teacher, Hebbar sir and his wife, it got crashed for a second. But he did not stop there. Uh, he invited or he welcomed me, me, Archana Upadhyaya and Gargi Shabrai into his house, into his house Latangi and he looked after us like our own children. And uh, uh, I don't think I can say what Hebar sir has done for me because it will go on for hours. I think it will just suffice if I said that I am what I am now, it's only because of sir. If my life moves forward, it is because of him. He is my guru in everything. So, and he also established Ranjani Memorial Trust in 2014, just one, after, just one year after his daughter passed away in her name. And, he, uh, and through this trust, he has been uh, working to, to promote young talents in classical music, Hindustani and Carnatic, and helping them in many ways by giving them scholarships, incentives and uh, taking them to great gurus. Uh, and all those things he has been through all these things he has been helping young young talents to uh, to pursue their dream of becoming a musician so and uh, he has also composed many ragams for uh, many purandaradasa songs and and other karnada devar namas and he has also written many books on music on musicology he has written on music criticism and 
he has also written many such books. Uh, he has a, he's also written a book on Shama Shastri and many, many other such books. He is a very prolific writer and he is very actively writing in, uh, in a magazine of our place called Raghadhana Shri, for which he is editor since many years now. Um, so I would like to, uh, and all his articles, all of us are trying to upload them to our website, ganjanimemorialtrust.in under the name of, under the title Voice of Hebbar, so that many people can come to know about his uh, beautiful thoughts and beautiful writing, writing style through, through this media. So, welcome to you sir. This is me proudly presenting my Guru Aravind Hebbar sir for today, for him to speak about the way to do, the way to do Sangeeta Sadhana and all the problems and uh, other consequences related to that. So, Let's all listen the voice of Hebar today. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Samanvi. I am privileged today that I am flattered by my own student in front of the public. She has defeated me in many ways. She is my proud student too. I know nurturing of such talents in the house, how difficult it is, and what are all the pros and cons that we get in our house when we bring up such children. I am coming from a family where we have a few outstanding geniuses. My uncle, maternal uncle, Bhagalodi Devarao, was an ambassador, high commissioner of India, long back. Was an outstanding genius. My own cousin brother, Dr. B. Surendra Rao, I adore him as one of the geniuses. I have my brother's son's son, one called Abhimanyu, extraordinary wizard who has a place in London now for studying. Because of COVID, he is now in Bombay, I am told. He's an extraordinary, brilliant and a wizard and a genius. I have one more cousin brother's son who is in California. He's also extraordinarily brilliant. He's a biochemist, bio microbiologist. My daughter was very precocious while well, two and a half years. She made us to just open our eyebrows with awe. Such a geniusness was there in my daughter Ranjani. And God was very courteous enough and very merciful enough to send me a few more geniuses to my house, like Gargi, Archana, and Samanvi. I consider all these as extraordinary. If Samanvi doesn't hear this, it is better for you. However, I know how she can accept this word of appreciation from her own teacher. Whatever. We had challenges in our house. I have seen the big quarrels in the house. When these high talented children were growing up in their respective houses. My uncle was called as an avadhuta. That he doesn't talk. He is, for, he is for inward journey. He would not share his feelings with others. 
he became a very big prolific writer his short stories are very popular and he had the dream of writing entire mahabharata after his retirement of after coming back from russia rome and other places where he worked as high commissioner of india but he passed away dr b surender rao his father was an illustrious right um, reader entrepreneur historian geography homeopathy carnatic music hindustani music english grammar he has read kittel's dictionary whole and whole and he has marked where the, there were mistakes in kittel's dictionary every page has been worked out by the father of dr b surender rao the son is still more genius i have seen how this two father and the son were so geniuses at the same time so abnormal they are abnormal in the sense that they were not normal as we were they were not finding themselves in good woods with anybody they were called cracks they were called peculiar persons they were just pulled out from the house they were banged they were scolded profusely by their family men and they were called every time they are on books 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 and they read what they read will it be of any help the people in the surrounding they would just comment on them when i started imparting music knowledge to my daughter everybody just made fun of me saying that i am making another subalakshmi in udupi okay why not and i had to be deprived of my privilege to be associated with my family members because of my keen interest in music i was deprived of that privilege of learning music and i thought that i should give that facility to my daughter so that urge in me perhaps made me to give full focus to my daughter at the same time this is unprivileged person made a thinking that that should not happen to the posterity that should not happen to any other children so we thought with our own same mind people minded people we started ragadana under the banner of ragadana an institution who dedicated its entire mission for the sake of music it did wonders here we did work because we were not given that privilege our children should not be deprived of that privilege so with this mission with this black background deserted background i thought that i should do something for this girl as well as the talented persons in and around udupi just as my daughter did so thus the travel began i had read so many books on music the musicians and found the trail of every musician's hard trip through their travels i knew that this is not a small thing knowing fully well that this is a very difficult task to enter into this venture i did it there was absolutely no favorable environment when i did this kind of venture along with my wife to my daughter ranjini in fact when she was in ssc there are so many 
quarrels between the school teachers and myself because they could not identify the talent in the child and when she came to puc that is plus 2 in the college i told you need not take 100 marks in any of the subjects just get a pass i have put you to science faculty the science subjects just to have scientific temper in you nothing else even if you fail in the subject i don't mind i know that you are on the right track in my house so go ahead she was so happy very orthodoxically she was going to the college and she was the only orthodoxy girl in the entire college with so much of jasmine and the traditional dress that she would wear in the college so all these things matter much in shaping a girl into this today's environment yes. and rajini field in plus 2 prarthana her own company companion was together when the result was out and we were in dr t s satyavati's house at bangalore satyavati madam was taken to surprise what prarthana got pass ranjani field i was also there my wife was also there ranjani her mother and i did not get any disturbance with the with the result coming up saying that she was fail that was a surprise to dr satyavati madam and also prarthana was on in tears how how come ranjani just fail it doesn't matter because where our travel was on music puc okay plus 2 years for the sake of some academics that that they should she should be with the, her companions her friends and she should be brought up with that uh, friends of her age and thus she had a, that kind of environment which is very fruitful in the college as well as in the house once she got fail in plus 2 we immediately decided that this she should be given proper training full time because since her 8th standard she was given training under soumyakka at madras yes soumya and she immediately said now it's time that i will go and stay with soumyakka and we were all doing art of living course here in this house myself my wife and she was making fun of us what is this every time do, doing these all these things exercises and breathing it so fast and very forceful but i said that will be very useful do it and i took her to the art of living course she was very much impressed and the teacher who was teaching that was very much impressed about by the very approach of this girl and teacher very senior teacher chayanna as we fondly call chaypati guru ji she he, he took and identified this girl as having the spark of spiritualism also yes. now why i have told all these things is because to bring up a child we have to know what talent that this child has in the beginning the parents of abdul kalam ji did not know that he would become the president of india yes. he was having a trouser he was wearing the shirts very poor family he would deliver the papers to each house never knew that he would become a president of india mm-hmm. but there was one mr ayangar who was nurturing the talents of this young boy abdul kalam to elevate him to such a high, such heights identifying his talents and abdul kalam became the world figure a scientific figure 
and adorable personality to us. So also, we too have so many, many MS Subbalakshmi's, Shyamanguri's, GNB's, or Abdul Kalam Ji's, or Srinivasa Ramanujam's in our house. They take birth as we believe from Hindu philosophy that the early, from the earlier birth they are taking this birth to continue their endeavor. Yes. While you were very young in first, first standard, you were singing so beautifully well. Not equal to the other students of first standard. You have heard the music earlier and you continued. And so also the, your companions who were in this the Tangi house in the Gurukula, where they were performing extraordinarily wonderful. Like Ranjani, you had heard music earlier. You had the property. And you have come here to continue that. My brother's son's son, Abhimanyu, had perhaps discontinued mathematics and physics in his earlier germam and he has taken his birth, his birth once again to continue it. While in 7th standard, he writes a book on advanced physics and mathematics while in Singapore. And it is about 400 pages thick. I have the copy. 7th standard boy writing this, yes. equaling some Ramanujam or Sivi Raman. How can? Why other 7th standard boy cannot do that? That means there is some spark. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift through prapti, through karma, as we call in Hindu philosophy, we get it. I did not become a musician. Failed totally. Perhaps I did some mistakes in my earlier janmam and I have come here perhaps to do only service, do service for the cause of music. So if I understand that, I will do that. Okay, I will, I will do that. That I have not become a musician, that I am um, totally desperate. No. No desperate. We have come here for with purpose. Yes. The parents, the mother and the father of the child have a key role to nurture such nature. In biology, we have a very big chapter called Nature and Nurture. Nature is this, the environment, the surroundings. Along with that, the boy, the girl is born. It is almost very near to nature, very near to nature. Natural. Natural. So this natural being is now given training in front of us so that it would become a trained person, a skilled person. While showing that skill or training, practice, the child will show some talents. It will have its options. Suppose you have all the um, with the different toys. My granddaughter will just select only those which is related to music. She would just play on the keyboard. She would just play the, the pipe. And my grandson will go in search of a small car and he just operates, takes the plug and he just puts it into the plug and resorts to some engineering works. There is another person in my house who will be always interested in reading, reading books instead of playing with these toys. It's their passion. It's their concern. It's their love. Now, they, it's their interest. It is their inclination. A parent has to identify this inclination while very young. And if I say, Sri Rag, you should not read. You should play. You should re read only textbooks from the class. Not Ramayana, not uh, the Himalaya. <laughs> no, 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 don't read. Because this father and the mother wants this person to become a doctor <laughs> or a, an engineer. These parents 
have not manufactured the sun to their tune. Yes. It happened that they became the parents of the child. It has to be known by the parent. Mm. They think that they are right to mend with the minds of these children. I am finding fault with the parents and not at all with the children. Yes. Because the parents are not given proper training in psychology or upbringing of children or real education. There is no proper training to the child who is talented. Talented children are first rank holders, say, or highly skilled ones. They will be the first rank holders. In the class, the first rank holder is only one. Yes. And he should be at the peak, extreme tip in the pyramid. He is only one. He is alone. Yes. And all others in large numbers. In the house, that one is in the house. That one talented person is in the house. Now you have to nurture it. To go to that peak. Yes. That means the way weightage that the parent has to give to this person, to this child, is very, very high. So they cannot just claim that I am, we are the big mm -hmm. knowledge, the abode of knowledge. They cannot think that. Parents, if they identify the inclination or love or passion of the child, child to a particular, um, say, uh, some science or music or art or history or whatever, they should take them to that field, yes. expose them to that field. And of course academics will be there. I have my brother-in-law who has put his son to cricket. What? Okay, cricket is not his cup of tea after some time. He just put it in drama. Hmm. He's a wonderful actor. Now why we should spend the entire money for the child just to become an engineer or a doctor or a high reputable management post? Not necessary. There are so many other things. There are so many other things which you can relish along with your yes. learning. So this is what I would like to tell every parent that they should learn how to nurture and bring up their child. He is very much interested in violin or some percussion. Okay, give that. Give some drums. Take drums instead of the toys. Give it. He will just beat. Oh, you cannot, you cannot open your uh, ears. He may cause some problems in the house. He will just drop it on the table or even on the vessels in the kitchen. Let him do that. But the mother will not take, don't, don't, I cannot talk to my friend over the phone. Why are you making all these things? No. Yes. You are doing some damage to the young kid in the house where there is a talent spurting. You have not given sufficient thought for bringing up mm. the child in that way. So that's why there is a problem in the house. That talented child becomes abnormal. Avadhuta. He is not uh, mixing with the people. He or she cannot mix. Mm. If he is a highly skilled and a talented student or a child, he cannot mix with others because his temperament is quite different. The child's temperament is quite different from others. So, he or she will go in search of such yes. talented personalities or ch children. They will go. Suppose, I have one child in the house who is very much interested in music. But, with a throat very similar to crow. <laughs> this kaku it's very difficult to be nurtured. Yes. But that girl or boy is very much interested in, in listening to these or reproducing the musical notes. 
put him to the instrument. Uh, the, by instrument, the one day very interested, very much interested. Second day, very much interested. Third day, it goes underground. Yes. So this happens because they are children. Yeah. Now, what the parent has to do, they have to make some wooing to the children. See, you do, do this today. Let us see. So don't leave the parent and leave the child to practice herself or himself alone. Yes. Be participating along with him or with it. Don't watch TV. Mm -hmm. Don't go for unnecessary chit chats with your neighbors. Yes. And let the parent squat and sit and be with music with that child. Yes. Then so that gives a further for yeah. support. Further support. Further, the parent has a confusion always. Mm -hmm. My stu my children should be very intelligent. Art, painting, music, instrument, uh, swimming, uh, yoga. Then what method? IIT coaching. Uh, what, what is that method? What what, what is that ma mathematics? That you, what we call? Uh, yeah. So, abacus. Uh, abacus. Okay. They take prestige of you, claiming that my child is so intelligent. Multitasking. Multitasking. I am telling to such parents with folded hands not to go for this. It's very stressful for the children. They are actually in the confused state and they are imposing that confusion to the child and the, the child becomes a mess, becomes a mess. So this is very bad. Yes. We are causing certain confused children to the society like this. If they are mastering one or two from these, okay, immediately stop all those things and nurture only one or two skills or talents in, in that mm. student. Take, take them to a proper guru and nurture them. No, if they, they, if they uh, I mean, uh, get so many, so low marks in the school, is it enough? No, they have to be very good, no? So, in the academics also, they should be 100%. And, okay, in music, okay, in music, uh, let them do. Yes. That means, this person is coming out of that shell. This person is a, to the academics. Priorities are to academics, academics, always. Yes. It's usually the case in many parents. Yes. No, but no parent, especially in our place. Mm -hmm. I don't say that this will happen in yeah. Madras, Chennai or some Bangalore or some other places where music is running, flowing, with bubbling. They won't say that. But in my place here, in Udupi or South Canada, if the child is showing some promise in such talents, they, the parents would not allow. Now you should get high marks in the college, in the school. If you are not taking high marks, you are useless. <laughs> This is the first damage parents do to the children. Yes. Parents think that, that they are perennial parents. <laughs> you know, in psychology, there are three stages of ego. I am, I am, I, ego. Ego is there. Yes. One is child ego. Second is parent ego, third one is adult ego. Of course, Sigmund Freud identified this and told whether it is correct or not, we shall not bother. Mm -hmm. But these three are very much the words which can be very much pondered to. Child ego means childlike childish. activities, not childish. Oh, okay, it's not childish. It's not childish, it's childlike activities. For example, if a three or the third or the fourth standard boy, you will just <laughs> cry. Can you do that? No. No. Can I do that? It harms mm. my dignity. You do so. I am. I, civility calls me immediately not yes. to not to cry because I am too intelligent. Yeah. So I should not cry like a child. This is the first thing, first wrong thing that we have committed. Yes. We cannot become childlike. And if, if I cry like a child, they call childish. No. 
I should not be childish, I admit, but I should be childlike in my innocence. Mm, yes. It is clear. Yes. It is crystal clear. And it should be transparent as a child. And a child, when it is just taking one ice cream, even if you give a, a diamond, see, there is a diamond necklace for you, would you like to have child? Ice cream or diamond? The child will say, ice cream. <laughs> Why? It's innocent. He does not know the value of diamond. It's yeah. just it knows the value of ice cream now. It gives but, it happiness. But if you say that ice cream at your age or my age, that becomes childish. <laughs> yes. So when it is told by a small child, it's childlike. Yes. And that childlike behavior can be just transported as it is by in perception, in perception, mm -hmm. perceiving the matters, yes. but not in the behavior. Yes. When I cry, I should cry. When I am supposed to wail, I should wail. When I am angry, okay? <laughs> no. That's not natural. It is going against my will. I am angry. I am supposed to do that. So this is childlike, single-mindedness. But when I am a, a parent, I started giving sermons. I start giving orders. Do that. Do not do that. These do's and don'ts will become continuously being coming from the mouth of the parent to such an extent that the child becomes a little bit resistant. The child becomes a little bit rebellious. Mm -hmm. The child... So, what is this? Every time this mother and father are parents just scolding me, do's, don'ts, do's. Why should I do that? So, the child becomes a rebel. A traitor. Yes. If you want to become... She, she to become a musician, she says, no, I don't want. Yes. Of course, she will take a, a big stick. I know it's okay. Oh, sorry, gama, pa, dani, sa. But for, for the sake of the mother and the father, she will start screaming. It's not for her or his own sake. Never, sake. never. Now, Just on compulsion. How do you fine tune this mind? It's only after the parent fine tuning themselves in their mind mm -hmm. that you can tune them. Yes. This kind of fine tuning, tuning and fine tuning is not there in the parents. Most of the parents if I am sacrilegious to blame all the parents, I may be pardoned. Mm -hmm. And I, say, I would say, most of the parents are like that, yes. which I have seen. And these talented children are damaged at every step, from their mother, from their father, sometimes even their teachers, mm -hmm. in the schools, or elsewhere. Yes. Even the neighbors, friends may cause damage. Because this is an abnormal child. It looks abnormal. Yeah. These geniuses, I used to say, that ha are half cracks. <laughs> within inverted commas. Do you know why? Because we are claiming them ourselves as we are normal. These geniuses look abnormal. And thus we say, they are half cracks, the slightly loose. Jana Solpa Saril. In Canada, now we will say, E Jana Solpa Saril. And Solpa Antara Arthane. Because he should act as we think. I think. There is a parent ego. This is the parent ego that becomes a, an obstacle in the learner's mind. Yes. Then what you should do? Hmm. There is a third one. That's called adult ego. Adult is friendly. Hmm. If I am treating you like my friend, you will learn more. Yes. So that's a friendly relationship. It's healthy also. It's very healthy. And it is in a slightly in an intellectual level that we are conversing each other. Not childish. 
but with a childlike mind i can converse with you with a childlike mind you can converse with me so this is possible and and that there is there will be a very good interaction between the two in an adult way mm. lord krishna was such a big personality a god vishnu incarnated and he was the best friend to arjuna yes he was friendly he conversation his conversation with arjuna was an adult he never parented mm-hmm. he was not child like so adult kind of conversation adult kind of approach adult kind of relationships in the house and in the school or in the environment will definitely give a better scope for further development yes what i say now the immediate question may arise then who would say that that you should do yes that should be parent also to, to an be, extent to an extent how much is it 50 50% no depending on the situation yes depending on depending on the place the child the parent and the adult should work together in a balance in a balance ecosystem yes ecosystem this is ego system <laughs> and this ego system should work very well that at particular place i am a manager of a big company i cannot be adult always yes i will i will give instructions in the form of a friend but at the same time i will make the person to get the things done mm. by administering him some work in a little assertive way that is a parent and he will just go to a coffee tea to the tiffin tiffin hall cafeteria like a child with that employee this employer now becomes child employer becomes a parent and an employer gets the things done with a friendly approach to employee so there is a very healthy relationship between the employer and the employee exactly this is what needed yes and this is need of the hour yes and we the parents i am also included mm-hmm. we the parents have to understand this before we nurture our children this is what uh, as a uh, an introduction <laughs> of course i know that it's quite lengthy <laughs> and it's time also yes <laughs> given lesser time for people to react and also you have a, a long list of questions it seems yeah, yes. uh, i will just stop this we will continue further if time permits in the later there are any questions you can please post it in the comment section so i guess there's one question by b krishna rao how to encourage our children for singing okay unless they have a fire they have a sparkle they have a incentive uh, 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 interest it's very difficult mm-hmm. yeah you, you can cannot force them you cannot make a crow to sing like a koyal yes let us understand and let us not equate the child to a crow and a koyal yeah, yeah. this is too cruel yes it is but you have to identify whether the child has an inclination for singing so expose them to music bhajans satsang bhajans and if you are exposing it to the western music that child will take the guitar then you are in the indian system the child is playing on guitar after becoming obsessed with the guitar the child will become a very skilled guitar player you yourself will say ji is very bad this is very bad it is a very biased approach actually it's a wrong approach yeah wrong approach parents did not know that this would happen so while entering into that field let the parents think twice thrice 10 times 100 times as how to do this mm. it's a p- mere psychology and we are helping the child we are not dominating we are as- not asserting our thoughts to the child mm. let it grow in a freedom and at the same time with the tight yes time schedules about the time schedules i have not talked anything though i am saying that so much of freedom is give, to be given for all these 
musical activities or whatever activities, a strict discipline on time must be given, otherwise sadhakam is not possible. Yes. Yes, over to you. So there is one more question. It's Archana Upadhyaya. What to do if the child's interests keep varying? Okay, that's also a good question. We say that it's a wavering child. <laughs> Just like first ordering for masala dosa <laughs> and then it gets bored. <laughs> bored and then vada. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, ice cream. <laughs> Ultimately, that vada was good. Shall we have one more uh, uh, vada? There is some wavering here. I, sh I, I don't say that there is not, no wavering in anybody. There will be wavering. But one has to tune it up. One has to give proper exposure on one field and find out the priority of the child. Hmm. For example, one person is very much interested in music and at the same time very much interested to read novels <laughs> like you yes. and Archana. You read books, novels voraciously to your age. I am yet to come across with people like you. You are a topper in the class. You do well in music. At the same time, by hook or crook, you will find some time to read the novel, thinking that I would just come in the way. No, not at all. But if you have the fear that I will just come in the way, that's good. I yes. welcome it. It enables me to, to concentrate upon music more. Moreover, to be aware. Yes. While you are reading novel, okay, time is over, half an hour is over, one hour is over, then sir will not allow me. Be aware, timetable, sticking out of the time is important. So if there is a wavering of interest, one of the interests may take the upper hand. Hmm. Which of the three will come to the top, we do not know. Suppose I am giving too much of interest and too much of exposure and too much of incentives to you for learning music, the other two will just get subsided and just remain dormant. Yes. It may remain. Let it remain. Yeah, it's okay. I don't say that one is a master and skilled in only one talent. Mm. We may be multi-talented. But let us be very, very cautious to bring the best or the Person who is having the priority given, hmm. let us identify it, yes. diagnose it and nurture it. Yes. So there are no more questions now. So until it comes, I have a question. There is this new system of homeschooling young musicians uh, so that they can, it enables them to practice more nicely. So uh, like, I don't know, like, what are the consequences of homeschooling and uh, its pros and cons? Okay. Um, I have a different opinion. Okay. Nothing is bad. Yes. If you are sending the children to the school, it is very bad. Because we are giving the same age-old system of education there in the school. It's bad. Yes. If you are keeping the child in the house, homeschooling, in the name of homeschooling, it's good. As well as bad. Now, what is the advantage of sending my child to the school? It gets a social life. Social life. Because the child will have the privilege to move with their, her or his contemporaries, play with them. In the house? It's alone. A grey haired mother, <laughs> pestering mother. <laughs> A grey-haired father who is always having eyebrows at the top, always workaholic, work from home, <laughs> and thus that will cause this child to become grey-haired while twelve, or it starts working from home while twelve. Yes. 
is it needed we'll be spoiling the should child should it should it just move with the parents alone yeah should it be so much so much captivated in that home mm. to tune to the dance of their parents no other world exposure yeah. no. i know there are some musicians also who are having home schooling and i have identified certain slight abnormal behaviors in them in the social life there is a small setback they talk less they are not very eloquent in their speech there is there are some hurdles in their behaviors they stand at the back some inferiority will just be flocking on to their head and without their knowledge they will keep quiet or the parents would have told see i have done home schooling you should be extraordinary very jubilant talk so high jubilance extraordinary talking unnecessary unwanted sometimes with pungence mm. and complaining others all this will happen in that captivation home school ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಯೇ ಮೊದಲ ಪಾಠ ಶಾಲೆ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಮೈ ಹೌಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಶುಡ್ ಅಲೌ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಟು ಫೇಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಫೇಸ್ ದ ಆಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಟು ಫೇಸ್ ದ ಫೇಲ್ಯೂರ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಫೇಲ್ಯೂರ್ giving full environment full scope for uplifting because it's only your knowledge being imposed on the child yeah there is some compilation on both sides yeah, but of course from homeschooling there there have been many very good artists also who are very who are very knowledgeable in music very good very good and geniuses may come crop up yes. okay are you are you sure that you are bringing up a child genius do it please Yes so it's up to the parents to decide on what to do Siddhartha was also brought up like that <laughs> and later he just took take took a around around the world and he found that the world is different how many days you can captivate mm-hmm. he became a genius he became buddha yes right yes. we have so many such siddhartas inside the house <laughs> and they have voluntarily they have become buddhas yes not buddhus <laughs> because there is a virtue virtue in them and that will definitely come to mm. surface yes in today or tomorrow mm. but if the parents are too bad mm. too parent then there may be a crash in the house a continuous quarrel a continuous domination and a waterloo in the house yes so there is one question from ajit kumar uv how many years of dedication required for an for an average student to sing there is no definition for average yes in the school average student is I, we do not know whether it is 35% or 50% <laughs> if it is 100% average student is 50% <laughs> so in music so some object subjectivity is how can i say that he, he or she is an average yes. student it's very difficult it is up to the teacher to find out who is average who is below average who is above average in his school in his school the standard scale is different mm. it should not be compared to the other school yes so to that he has I tell you, I found that you were a little bit extraordinary while learning. And I thought that, that you should be exposed to still more higher learning. I was not capable of. I found myself that I cannot raise my standard to that level. You know what we did. Yes. We took you to 
a great master in Chennai under whom you are learning. And the way in which that approach was given has given you a clear logarithmic development in your endeavors. Perhaps that should be done. Mm. Average student will be given a rigorous training, a rigorous training. And how the training could be given, what kind of training that we can impart, all we, have, we are going to discuss tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, Sangeeta Sadhana in terms of how to practice and take the best out of it. Mm. Taking into consideration so many aspects of music, uh, I will talk tomorrow. Yes. Let us see. And uh, there's one more by Sharada Upadhyaya. Sir, whether participation, winning and failures in competitions may lead to gain or lose interest in a particular field. Very good. This is always a problem. Whether competition should be held or not held. Mm -hmm. Yes. Competition always brings out jealousy in one way or the other. Yes. To subside the jealousness, jealousy, the parents and the friends and the teacher should toil for ever. Yes. In Olympics or in cricket or in sports, we say there is a sportive competition. We know how the best batsman will get a big lap on his cheeks by way of um, friendship or some way he will get a, a thumb or a lap by one way or the other showing jealousy. It's a jealous, jealousness. I was told by my son that if there is a birthday mm -hmm. or if there is a happy uh, or some occasion where he got a prize or award, his friends will come along with the boots, shoes and thump him. Yes. This happens many times. An award is given an award by giving a stamping in the shoes. How cruel. Is it the way that we are celebrating this victory? This has caused jealous. It's a showcase of jealousy actually. So competition leads to this. Yes. Whether competition is to be done, then how do, you, how do we identify the talent? Yes. First, we have to say, whether you get the first prize or the second prize, don't worry. My dear, go ahead. Students should learn to accept the failures also. Yes. We had one such experience. Very big event to identify the good talent with so much of large sum money instituted there. I took my daughter to that place, which I don't want to disclose. Yes. And that event was a very big event with uh, 1 lakh rupees and uh, mm -hmm. 50,000, 25,000 like that. First, second, third prize. My, I took my daughter for the competition. Mm. You know, it took place very near to a toilet. Okay. A small closed chamber uh -huh. where only one, the jury, one person would sit there and only one person will be allowed to enter in and the door will be closed unceremoniously to insult those who are peeping inside. <laughs> and then Till the evening it took place and everyone said, oh, your daughter sang very well. She is bound to get first prize. How do you know? We heard. Through the crack in the door. Through the, through the crack in the door like a Chandra Gupta. <laughs> so they had heard. I didn't. Ranjani, Ranjani, my daughter did not get the prize. The first thing that I told was not to dis get, get discontented. Yes. This failure has to be admitted. It's like a challenge for next time. Challenge to ourselves, yes. to our ego, to our I, to mm. our soul, to our further future. Yes. So we have failed there. It is not a permanent failure. That's the first stepping stone for next success. Mm. If 
a teacher or a parent can tell this to the child effectively definitely competition is good yes otherwise competition is deadly yeah so sir are junior and senior grade music exams compulsory for a music student by anupam no. krishnan no no <laughs> need not so i guess that's that's all the questions that have come now uh, so we have time can we continue so three or four minutes sir okay fine then all right i had a question like what is the role of criticism in shaping the student we are going to have sessions of continuous series of sessions under ranjani memorial trust what criticism means how criticism could be and how criticism can shape we people all mm. not musicians alone yes yes how criticism can shape we all people i think we will have a very long discussions and if the people are very much interested yes. we can have it because whatever you said now about the competitions that the students should learn to accept the failures i think that kind of behavior uh, that kind of mindset can come only if the student is you know if he knows what criticism means if he has been criticized then it it's it proves as a base for the student to understand what failures is right okay there is one called apta vakya mm one which is very much akin to me to my feelings mm. one who is very much close to me mm. one which is very much close to me is a book is a person is a, a, a speech apta vakya if you have con- complete faith total belief in that vakya in that sentence person or book or sound that or the preaching that you have heard you can ask that person or the you can read that book or you can once again listen to that and once again think whether i have gone wrong or right yes so the apta vakya the person who is believable mm. who who whom you can trust most he will guide you what to do and what not to do yes and if the people are saying oh it is excellent it is super it is super <laughs> it is uh, clapping and it is jai hind and, and uh, people will say anything and everything they are all trashes yes okay let them do that let them tr- applaud we will take it in that spirit only and do not elevate it to our intellectual level saying that all people are with me no, yes. no, no i'm sorry we should not give so much of um depth mm. we should not lay more mm. emphasis for such a general uh, view of the public but we, we have to respect them yes to that extent only we should not take it into our head yes Oh, you got some ten uh, thousand viewers in FB. <laughs> okay, fine. Then what? What did you talk? Or what did you see? This one. Okay, let let me see. Let me hear. Okay. How was it, sir? Fine. Because the management skill permits me. I mean, it it prompts me to say that I should not hurt you. Mm. So I shall. I will not hurt. i will see it's fine very fine i will shrug it yes and with the shredded uh, shoulders it was very fine the child gets confused yes it loses the, the track the musician gets confused so this happens and we are going i think we can go for a long discussion yes in music criticism yes it's a very so, good topic series yeah we will do that yes so the times up uh, thank you everyone for uh, participating there are many many comments saying it's very good and it's very educative thank you all for uh, coming and watching this we will be back tomorrow again to discuss more about the the methods of practice for students how to involve ourselves in music and all other things so uh, hebar sir still has many more uh, uh, ideas to share with us so we'll be back tomorrow 
tomorrow at the same time 11:35 yeah um tomorrow is a guru purnima day we have to celebrate the guru's day mm. tomorrow and thus um i have planned i had planned earlier that we will have a facebook live tomorrow also but because there may be some commitments on our part to have salutations to all our gurus tomorrow i have some other commitment hence i have made some premiere and it will be webcast tomorrow sharp at 11:35 dip tomorrow morning 11:35 to 12:35 uh, please listen to it and share your thoughts and if you would like to contribute to enhance my knowledge i would most welcome it and please be with us let us have a, a good um, discussion about how we can bring up the best talents from our society and if you would contribute if you would tell me a, a little more things after listening to me i would definitely welcome it and it's not parenting <laughs> type of teaching here i'm welcoming you all people to get involved you may be very juniors today you are the po- potential parents of tomorrow and hence be ready to face the talented child to be born in your family let us be natural and let us nurture it in a natural way so that the skill and the talent will be blossomed yes thank you very much thank you samanvi and also all the listeners who have listened to me and those who are going to listen later thank you sir thank Namaskar. you very much